so this gets me to a section on um, plants and containers and, and uh, weights and measures. Now, this talks about um, several different concepts of weights and measures in that our industry has finally re arrived in the, into the corporate retail world. Um, $80 billion industry, um, number one, gardening is the number one outdoor leisure activity across the country. <coughs> Lots of regulatory attention with, with quarantines and face species. And now, weights and measures. Now, when you think of uh, weights and measures, where does that impact your life? Where does the Bureau of Weights and Measures impact your life? Gas pump? Is there a weights and measures sticker on the gas pump? Actually, everything we do, where the, the National Institute of Commerce, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, where's the headquarters? Anybody know? Boulder? Boulder? Yep. Um, Department of Commerce, they set the policy and developed model weights and measures law. <coughs> and then the states adopt them and enforce the law with civil and criminal penalties. Now, the law is. Section 17 of this law says the method of sale should provide accurate and adequate quantity information that permits the buyer to make price and quantity comparisons. When you go grocery shopping and you're looking at different products, do you look at the price <coughs> per unit or you just buy what you want? You've got to check the price per unit, look at your quantity comparisons. So, no person. Any misrepresentation in section 16, no person shall misrepresent the price of any commodity or service by weight, nor represent the price in any manner, calculate, or tend to mislead in any way, shape, or form, or deceive anybody. I started out telling you that we used to call a number one nursery can a gown. It is not a gown. It's actually three quarts. So if that dimension of volume is advertised, <coughs> that dimension of volume has to be accurate. Of course, there's other things. Now this law only applies to advertising, point of sale signage, and it's only at the retail level. Business to business interchange at the wholesale level, doesn't matter. Buyer beware. Now, what brought this to the attention of the greenhouse industry? Well, in 2003, an industry complaint of the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture resulted in scrutiny of our industry. And what happened was a flyer came out advertising 12-inch hanging baskets in a box store. An independent garden center went to the box store, took his tape measure out, and saw that there were 11-inch baskets and not 12-inch baskets, and filed a lawsuit. And that's where it all started. Who's was in the law. Well, the box store, like I said, they have flyers that they print out for one and they expect them all to be the same across the country. So 2003, they had a deadline to comply and it went national later. And um, trade associations got involved, Society of American Florists, American Nursery and Landscape Architecture Society got involved. Um, so forth and so forth. American Nursery and Landscape Association, the Society of American Forests, joined a joint task force uh, in February of 2004, negotiated a temporary solution, and got the industry through season because the state of Pennsylvania was ready to do a stop sale. Unless you complied with full regulations. Now, as a transitional agreement, but now the other states have fallen suit, and it's now a national policy. So, um, American Nursery and Landscape Association and Society of American Forest worked with their uh, local agencies and extension people and went around the state and got the word out. That's where this presentation came from, as part of that. So, what we're trying to do is educate the industry and move forward to get this all into compliance with the law. Now, task force was formed to research the problem, not to negotiate with the industry. And the ideas. Now the people that were involved in this, uh, Dave Fugino and Hines, Mark DeYoung in Ames, Iowa, and um, 
John Van Ricken and Green Circle Growers, um, all of these individuals on this trade uh, evaluation were major and major stakeholders. For instance, John Van Wingerden and Van Wingerden and family probably sell 40% of the type material in the country. Uh, Q-Pack, Dillon Products, uh, and uh, Nursery Supplies, these are all container manufacturers. So they had a specific uh, vested interest as well. So what's required? Declaration of identity, what it is. Declaration of responsibility. If something's wrong with it, who's accountable? Okay. Declaration of contents. How much is there of it? And of course, supplemental information. So in the greenhouse industry, what's required? Common name? Where was packed? Where was grown? Who grower was? Who the distributor was? Retailer. For instance, a bottle of aspirin is going to say distributed by CBS Pharmacy, uh, Woody Socket, Rhode Island. That contents, size of the plant, could be the size of the soil of the container, could be the capacity of the container. The industry practice in our industry is to choose the capacity <coughs> of the container. It has, capacity means inside measurement, either the depth, width, or the volume. The volume, liquid volume, is industry practice, and it must be US and metric. Everything else could be anything else. Um, you want to understand what the rule says? Go to a store. Who's got a Coke bottle? Declaration of net contents anywhere in the packaging. So here we're Coca-Cola bottle. This is a spray. <laughs> this is a Sprite bottle, but we're going to talk about Coca-Cola. It's got your primary display panel right up front. It says Coca-Cola or Sprite. That's your declaration of identity. Net contents: 20 fluid ounces or 591 mils. Okay. Declaration of responsibility followed by the Coca-Cola company, and it gives you the consumer information. This is all law. Okay. So, when's it required? Well, actually, the law was in existence long before the, this lawsuits came out. 20 years. Change production practices? No, we just have to adopt and work on accuracy of labeling. That's the whole thing. Who's responsible to make sure it's accurate? The retailer. In other words, the retailer is going to tell the grower, that's where the retailer says, you will produce it in this size. All enforcement and penalties are at the retail level. And, of course, most growers choose to do it as a service. And, like I said, this is put together by the Society of American Florists, American Nursery Landscape Association, and the National Institute of Standards and Technology. 